Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with uh, my partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Liz hey. is on some journey to uh, get back to civilization and <laughs> Wi-Fi bandwidth. And I guess she's logging on on another device. So Liz will be back in a second. It's been one of those days. Got a really special guest, and this is going to be awesome. I've got Laura Bianchini with me. She is with uh, Moody Insurance Agency. They are an insurance company. I guess you're headquartered uh, in, in the D.C. area. Is that correct? Yes, Germantown, Maryland. Mm -hmm. But you guys ride all over the country. And yes, we do. Laura specializes. She spends about 80% of her time, about 80% of her book is cleaning companies. So unlike a lot of you know insurance agencies that will write anybody a policy, a lot of them don't really know much about our industry and our special challenges and our special needs. Laura is not only an expert in writing insurance as an insurance agent working for a, a, a large agency and has access to a lot of insurance companies, but she also knows a lot of the details about cleaning companies and our special challenges from a staffing standpoint, from all the risks that are associated with the services we provide. And um, had Liz there for a second. In the world that we knew three months ago in terms of the risks that we have from an insurance standpoint and what the smart business moves are for, for, for cleaning business owners in terms of what uh, types of policies they need and all the things they need to do to, to, you know, minimize risk and indemnify themselves from the challenges. I guess a lot of that has changed over the last few months with the introduction of the coronavirus. And um, we're just really lucky to have, have Laura here to explain this. Uh, Laura. Tell us a little bit about what's been going on in your world and a little bit of uh, highlights as to some of the things we need to be thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. Tom and Liz, thank you so much for having me. Um, so a lot, has, I'm going to actually give some information that I have from our agency because it is actually changing daily and I want to make sure that I get it all to you. Um, so um, things that are coming through right now are unprecedented. We've never seen this in the insurance <laughs> Oh. Winner, winner, Laura. You don't even know it, but you're no. a winner right there. That, that's the inside <laughs> joke. We have to use the word unprecedented at least once during every Facebook oh. Live. We've been, <laughs> we've been at this for less than three minutes, and rarely does our get rarely does our guest. Hey. Win. But we were, that is yeah. that is cool. I'm sorry. That was amazing. Thank. <laughs> Very fluid and I think everybody's trying to keep up with new information as it's coming in. Recently our agency prepared a coronavirus statement and I wanted to go over some points that are on there um, and share some industry information. Anybody that would like the information or would like any um, information or the statement, I'll be happy to share it with you later. Um, if you want to do a screen share, Laura, you can do that and I can I can put that up for us. Well, the problem I'm having problems on my main computer, so I'm on my iPad with you guys. So I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's my that was my plan to share, but I don't have it on here, so I apologize. So uh, um, um, I might be able to help you. Let me. Well, you keep going, and I'll see if I can find what you're want to okay. speak to. So um, the real exposures that we're seeing in the industry right now, the claims that are coming through, have to pertain to business income and civil authority coverages. Business income coverage is to respond to losses that result from physical damage to property that are caused by a loss. Some examples of that could be a fire, windstorm, hailstorm. Civil authority coverage is when you're not able to access a property as a, re as a result of another property where civil authority was precluded. So, for instance, you had a building next door to yours, it caught on fire, and now the fire department has said nobody's allowed in. Um, you also have civil authority when you've been closed. So if they've told you, um, you know, we could actually have that with some of the rioting that's going on right now, too. So um, what we are finding in the world right now with the insurance, um, it's likely that these claims are going to be denied as covered property losses have not happened. So basically, they're saying if you have to have something happen to your physical location 
or business income coverage doesn't apply. We don't want to give anybody any false hope. However, there are a few states that have filed legislation to have insurance carrier cover these claims despite the policy provisions. So right now, the states that have filed, it started in New Jersey. So it's New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, Louisiana, and Massachusetts. So um, if, it, if enacted, it will be retroactive for any insurer business interruption policy in place from March 9th, 2020, and it will go through July. Um, the problem is that we're having is most of these insurance companies purchase insurance themselves from reinsurance companies. And so if these claims do get paid, if there isn't some type of bailout for an insurance company, we're going to see a lot of insurance oh. go under. So the market <sighs> get very difficult. It'll be challenging to find insurance coverage because they were never designed to cover these types of losses. I mean, this is like nothing we've seen before. So, right. um, most jurisdictions, even though they had done um, filed legislation, a lot of the uh, legislative activities had been closed due to COVID. So the process, they're just starting to get some of this paperwork. And this could take a lot of time to process. We could be looking at months. We could be looking at years. So what we're telling people, we're encouraging anyone having business income or civil authority claim to get it filed with their insurance carriers. The insurance carriers are the ones that can accept or deny any of the claim. Like I said, most of them are gonna deny everything. We haven't seen any that have been approved yet. If the legislation goes through, a policyholder who had a claim denied may be able to have the claim revisited. So when filing the claim, the adjusters will be looking for the following information. And this is really important because I'd like people to get ahead of what's gonna be needed if they have to file a claim. They're gonna be looking for profit and loss statements, sales records, income tax returns, rent rolls, and payroll records. So, um, so that's basically what they're gonna be looking for for these claims. So if they can get them filed, I don't want them to worry and think that if they don't file a claim that it's not going to be covered. I will say just to keep an eye on it, what's going on in your state, we'd be happy to help with that. They're welcome to call me. Um, but once things are approved, um, the sooner the better to get it filed. I just think that they are going to be the first ones in line if this does happen up. So who we're really watching is the state of New Jersey. If this does happen in New Jersey, chances are this will start rolling out to other states and this could be a big deal for everyone. So, um, some well, other things. When you say a big deal, when you say a big deal, Laura, I mean, big deal from, hey, I'm a business, I'm gonna get some additional money or a big yeah. deal like this is going to run the insurance markets and we're gonna be, you know, all paying more for insurance in the long run? I mean, how how does all this play out? It's gonna be a big deal all the way around. So if they push this through, the business income claims would be paid. And basically, if you have a business owner's policy, which most clients do, unless you have a package that just has general liability, then you don't have any business income anyway. Um, but for the business policy where you have business income coverage, usually those policies are written on actual loss for 12 months. So what they'll do is the insurance company will go back over an 18 month period to collect their data and mm -hmm. claims are paid up to 12 months based on that information. So it could be significant is what I'm saying. So if we wow. see that people were down just for a couple months, um, maybe not as large, but if we're seeing that this is gonna have a second wave come fall, you know, it's it could be this is why i'm saying it could be a big deal so our hope is that um our hope is that they there is something that they're going to be able to do but nobody's saying anything everything that we're reading every conference call that we've been on they're still denying everything so, so what's i mean i guess this is like one of those unknown things we're just gonna have to wait and see like everything else but you know mm -hmm. What, what are the odds? I mean, do we think that it's likely that Jersey is going to push something through and make insurance companies, in essence, make insurance companies play claims against things that they never even insured for? I mean, it's, it's kind of bizarre if you really think about it because yeah. they're not the policy. They didn't I mean, charge for it. Right. How are they right. supposed to pay for things they never charged for? I mean, well. 
there's the problem. That is the problem that we're running into. And business income claims, like I said, insurance companies, they take the book of business that they have and they go to reinsurers based on what they're going to be insuring and they buy insurance for themselves. So there, there isn't even coverage for them. So our thought process is they've been doing all these bailouts without somebody helping the insurance companies if these claims are real. We could see, like I said, we could see a lot of insurance companies just fall. Like they could just, it would put businesses out. Businesses that have been around that are some of the largest will go under. So, uh, which, we mean, gotta, which means that next year when we're looking for general liability or workers' comp or auto or whatever, our premiums might be a whole lot higher, right? Right. So, right. And that's now, if we can find anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and the, other, the other problem, too, is that many insurance carriers can write any policy. Everybody can write a liability policy, but this industry needs specific coverage. So for damages that you cause, your care of um, other people's property, it's not like a typical insurance policy. You aren't going to typically injure someone on a general liability. You're not. Where we're going to yeah. see most stuff happening is going to be property damage, care control. We had, we just had a huge property damage claim that came through and, um, and I'm so glad that we have coverage and I'm glad that it's right now <laughs> because they're going to get something out of it. But um, yeah, so it, those forms are what might not be available if the market changes drastically, but we're keeping an eye on it. I don't know if it's going to go through, but um, we're watching closely, but we've been told that New Jersey will be the first state. So if it happens in New Jersey, then we're going to start seeing other places things go through. Well, I, I also got have to hope that if that does go through, that there will be some type of bailout for the insurance companies. I mean, I feel like the government has been doing a really good job of of seeing need and then responding. Uh, right. May, maybe not always in the best way or in the way that we might all really like the most, but uh, we have seen them be really responsive to to our needs. So more so than we thought they would be. I mean, Absolutely. Least, uh, my husband owns a business as well. So we're all we're all in the same boat together. And um, yeah, we were we were kind of surprised. So, yeah, I had I have some more stuff I'll share with you, too. Um, Anybody that is having trouble with making their insurance payments. So this could be on your business insurance, your personal insurance, your health insurance, your anything insurance. We are asking that you reach out to your insurance carriers directly, not your agents. Your agents can't help you with this. Call the carriers directly. Most of them have deferred or delayed billing. Even on large health insurance policies, they've readjusted payment plans or tacked it on to the end. Um, so you, it's definitely worth a phone call if you all need help to please do that. What I'm asking is please don't let your policies cancel. Um, coverage can be difficult to get later. In addition, there's going to be contractual obligations that you might be responsible for. So like landlords, um, franchisors, leased equipment, lost payees. So anything that you um, have out there that you have a contract on, you want to make sure that you've protected yourself. And most of those contracts, if you don't keep the coverage, most of them, they're allowed to buy the coverage for you and bill you. So don't get put in a situation where it's so expensive, like three times the cost of regular insurance, um, when you could have kept this pol a policy in force. Just so, got to make the call. Just, just contact gotta, somebody and exactly just do it. So there are some good things happening right now. Um, the NCCI, which is the National Council on Compensation Insurance, is looking to add a classification to all of the workers' compensation policies when they come up for audit. So basically, while you've had employees home, if you've been paying them, they're saying that they're um, trying to waive the cost, like you wouldn't have workers' compensation for those wow. people. So this is a big deal in our industry because um, the janitorial world, some some states, like California, the, the rate is outrageous <laughs> for $100 yeah. of payroll, right? right? Not like Virginia, which is one of the least expensive, but in California, I mean, we are talking about significant money. So yeah. um, in Maryland, it's been approved. So NCCI regulates 33 states. 
Maryland is the only one that's approved it yet, but we've been told that they should be following suit too. So that's something good to keep an eye on for your work compensation renewals um, or anything coming up. You should- So, well, uh, I'm sorry. So NCII, mm -hmm. NCCI rather is, is doing what? What change are they making? They're adding a classification onto the audit. So if you've been paying employees during downtime through the PPP loan, they're going to, usually you have a classification. It shows up on your payroll report. You still have to report it. It's like a, sco a special scopes code. Your special scopes code. In this case, they'll have a special scopes code where there will be no charge. For, for, for what period of time? For this the eight weeks. period of time that we've not been able to have people working. So, so not just so the eight weeks. No, it, it's going to be for, you know, this, this could be longer. I mean, we're talking about now getting out of this, but we could have another bout of this come fall. So, right. You, you know, um, this is, this is Laura, this has been part of, of the discussions we've had on, on a number of these Facebook lives on terms of what PPP covers and doesn't cover. And they're very clear that you cannot write, you know, your, your insurance, your workers' comp insurance, cannot be paid for through PPP funds, but if we're not paying them anyway. <laughs> oh my right. gosh, right? So in some states they're saying, and this this is all still very fluid, we're waiting for a lot of the stuff to come through, but in some of the states they're saying, we might even be able to reclassify employees. So even, you know before how you weren't able to do that. If you had somebody yeah. that did roofing for one day, they are now right. roofing classification. You can't split right. it. Many states don't allow that. You go in the highest rated class. What they're saying here is that truly you could have had people that were coming in and doing outside sales for you for the future, right? Yeah. Maybe you weren't right. allowed to go to homes or to do whatever, but people need you. They want you out there and you could be setting up appointments. So you could have had like outside sales people coming in and um, you could reclassify them. And as long as your payroll being split, many of the states are letting you pay split. You don't have to pay the highest rated class. Highest rate. That's what we have to do here. We have to pay the highest rate. So that would be amazing if they would yeah. let us split. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So there, there's been some other stuff that's going on too. New Jersey announced that COVID claims are not going to be included in experience rating cal calculations. So Everybody that has an experience modification factor, you get that factor usually when you're in your fourth year of business or you have $5,000 in premium typically, and it's rated on your back experience. So everybody starts at a one and then it adjusts as you have claims that come through. What they're saying is that these claims that come in, they're not gonna put them in those calculations. So if you have an experience modification factor of like 0.82 right now, which is a great experience modification factor, it's not gonna affect you but they're saying that these claims are going to be paid through workers' compensation. So New Jersey approved it. They've, they've already said they're going to do it. They're the only ones. We're waiting on the rest. But like we said, if it starts in New Jersey, kind of follow suit with the other ones. So we're keeping an eye on everything. So, um, how, so all of this is really great news for cleaning business owners because it's yeah. all going to you know, save us money. But on yeah. the insurance, from, from, from the insurance company's standpoint, I mean, this is all part of the actuarial calculation. So if they're not charging premiums, mm -hmm. then how are they going to, how, you know, where, how are they going to cover that pay. law? <laughs> yeah. How are they going to pay? Yeah. We're not sure. <laughs> so um, we're not exactly sure, but I'll tell you, California, this is not good news, but California um, just passed an executive order and it, it is this, and this is, this is really bad. So it says anyone included a presumption, anyone working outside of the home from March 19th through July 5th, who is diagnosed with COVID will be presumed to have contracted the illness at work. So that passed in California, huh? That's about one of the most employee friendly states ever. Oh, yeah. I see Wesley's here. That's oh, Wesley, I'm so sorry, Leslie. Yeah. Because this, this effectively increases the likelihood that the responsibility of COVID illness costs 
will fall into private business owners regardless of their illness, where it was contracted. So somebody could have picked it up at the grocery store. You could have picked it up just on a walk outside in kind of the neighbor. And they're saying that um, there, this is the presumption that's being made in California. So the good thing, that's the only good thing, is that New Jersey, because they came out and said, hey, we're not putting this in the experience modification factors, New Jersey is their own and their own thing. They're not part of NCCI. And um, California has their own as well. So the hope is, is even though 33 place states are in with NCCI, the hope is that as they see this, they'll get pushed back from everybody, that they'll start doing all of this. So they'll we still have a lot influence it. Yeah, we have a lot that we're keeping an eye on right now, but it is, it's changing like pretty much every day. But the only other thing that I want to tell people is that um, on your auto policies, and this, this has been personal insurance, business insurance, on the business insurance policies, many of the um, insurance carriers are offering credits on your policies if you've been on lockdown. You haven't been able to drive vehicles, um, and many of the states are not requiring that you turn your tags back in. So typically before, oh. with anybody in any state, if you had your tags, you had to keep the insurance coverage. It wasn't an option. Yeah. Um, but now, they, now they've eased up on that. So what they're saying is that, you know, you haven't driven for 60 days. You had a period, you had like 10 vehicles on a policy that you couldn't drive. Go back to your insurance companies and ask if there's any credit that's available. So. Many of them are helping, and they're doing it on personal insurance. Some of the personal ones, they're just issuing the credits anyway. They're just assuming if the state's on lockdown that everybody is on lockdown. And they haven't been asking very much even about, you know, are you an essential worker or are you traveling outside your house? But so that's yeah. what's Sorry, guys. One question that, that comes up, fairly frequently is what liability might we as cleaning business owners have, you know, house cleaning in particular have in terms of some accusation that, that we introduced COVID into somebody's home. Is there any, any liability there that, that we, we might need to be concerned about? We thought there was going to be, and then this I'm actually going to read you off of our statement, and I'm going to um, pull that up quickly. And then, like I said, I can get this over to you all, and you're welcome to share it. Gosh, I'm just thinking in California, it seems like the next natural, you know, uh, line of progression is it's assumed that you got it from work, so yeah. you obviously transferred it at work as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, gosh, I feel so bad for California. It seems like they're constantly yeah. just, gosh, can't can't catch a break. You know, there's a lot going on with California. I mean, yeah. they, they're paying they're paying workers compensation claims just to get them off the books. And how sad is that, right? But yeah. they know that when they come through, even if it's going to be small or even if it's going to be larger or whatever, if they go to court insurance companies right now don't stand a chance out there. And that's sad. So I'm going to read yeah. this part to you. Um, um, the most likely type of claims that are coming through businesses in the way uh, of are contracting the coronavirus. Um, the possibility of coverage responding is directly tied to the circumstances of the situation that's brought forward. But what they're saying that... Uh, it's going to be hard for them to say where they got it from. So if you had an elderly couple and you were in cleaning their home and you were the only one that was in there, we might have a claim. You could be, you could be liable. But they've also had people probably dropping off groceries, dropping off prescriptions. There's been other contact as well. It could have been on, at one point, bags, plastic, whatever. Um, if they're dry cleaning, it could have come from a number of places. So what they're saying is under the general liability policies, it could be very hard to prove where that you all were. Where negative. it came from. Yeah. yeah. You have for coverage to apply under the liability. 
So. I don't know. I think we've all probably been in the boat, too, where somebody will say something came up missing in a home and we were the only one in the home. Oh, yeah. You know, only only to find out later that there were 23 other people in the house yeah. and they're like, oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah, they were. Oh, I forgot. So, I mean, this yeah. is, just seems crazy yeah. to me. L Laura, if some homeowner, some somebody made a claim that they caught COVID from one of our employees, I mean, is there any mechanism through which they could could try to take some civil action? I mean, is that something that we would need insurance for? Um, well, you have under you have your business policy, and then under your personal policy, you have your home. They're saying right now is that how how and then them proving them is going to be the issue. Yeah. Right. But they can make the, how can they, they possibly claim they can make the claim regardless. So if they do, do we, call, do we call our insurance agent and absolutely. says Mrs. Jones says that we gave her COVID? And yes, absolutely. If you get any calls like that, or you get clean paperwork or anything like that, absolutely put it through your insurance company and let them deal with it. Um, okay. You Thank have, you. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, you have liability coverage. You have defense. Um, and you had, if you've purchased liability coverage, you have defense coverage and I would let the insurance companies handle it directly. I wouldn't even get involved in it. And, uh, I mean, they, they definitely are going to have to prove negligence. We don't know how this is all going to pan out. Like the, most of the claims that we've seen come through right now are on the business income side of things. Don't forget many, many States weren't open. Like they're just either opening or not even open yet. So this is just the tip of everything. Right. And again, back to unprecedented event, right? Absolutely. So just no way of knowing no. what what's going to be coming down the pike here. Yeah. If, if you have an employee who is diagnosed with, with COVID, let's assume you're not in California. Um, <laughs> Should, I mean, I guess the presumption in most states as well, it's just like catching the flu or the cold. You don't know where you got that. So it really isn't a responsibility of your employer. Is there any anything in particular you would advise uh, cleaning business owners to do in that regard? I would say this. If you have a person that is adamant that they have contracted it at work, I would go ahead and file a worker's compensation claim. It's not something that I would not file just because we don't know where this is going. Um, I would file worker's compensation claims. The problem is, is that again, they're going to have, we have to figure out where it came from. So for instance, I am in the metropolitan area. So in DC, we have a lot of construction going on. We always have construction going on in DC and, um, with the construction, there have been hotspots in specific buildings. So we know that in specific buildings, that contractors that have entered there, they've pretty much gotten COVID there. Like the ones that have been sick, the, ones, the problems that we've had, we know that it was from a particular job site. And those we, we're going to go ahead and file on. We don't know how the insurance company um, is going to be responsible responding yet. California just flat out said these are going to be covered under workers' compensation. So, But if it doesn't show up on your loss run or go against your mod, then you really, I mean, I don't say you don't care, but you really, it doesn't really hurt you. But the only state that has said they're not going to do that so far is New Jersey. Right. <laughs> so that's why we're hoping that the other states catch on to this. I mean, it's not like we knew anything like this was going to ever happen. So um, New Jersey is the only one that said they will not put it as part of their calculations. So, but there's a chance a, that yeah. we're thinking yeah. that other states might follow. Yeah. And it seems like it, we're kind of in a, in a cycle here where everybody's trying to help business, small business. Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought we'd ever get to this place? You know. I know. 
Congress, I mean, the Senate's going to be voting later this week on making the rules more favorable for the PPP loans, extending the uh, forgiveness time and extending the payback period for whatever amount of time and whatever monies you have left over, if any. But it seems like they're trying to make it really easy not to have to pay any of that money back. And even the insurance companies getting on board and 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 waiving our workers' comp premiums for a period of time. This is I don't I don't understand what's happening. I'm glad I'm glad that they're seeing the value of small business. So it's unprecedented. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> can't I can't hear you, Liz? You're No. Oh. There you go. Nope. No. Technology hasn't been our friend today. Anyhow. Wow, this is uh this is awesome, awesome stuff. Um you know, and I guess there's knowing or at least planning for, for, for the short run certainly is, is an important part. You back Liz? No. <laughs> is, is, is an important part of it. Um, long run. It's going to be interesting to see, mm -hmm. you know, what this, what, what, what are the long-term ramifications of all this going to be? It's hard not to, you know, I don't know if cynical is the right word, but at some point, of, some point in time, somebody, the insurance companies have to make money. So I don't know, maybe the government helps them out and then our taxes go up. I mean, something's got to happen. How? Yeah, I, don't, I, I do know that they did, they did a poll and one third of business owners have the business income coverage. So at least it would help a third of the businesses that are out there. So if they can do that, figure out a way to do it. We've got some messages here in the chat. Um, Marlo Knight, who I guess is a client of yours, says, Laura rocks. So brilliant, <laughs> exclamation point. Thank, Thank you for sharing the info and your time. I love having Moody and Laura as my agent. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you so much. That was so nice. <laughs> I mean, I know that you you spend a, a lot of time. I mean, I run into you at like convention every year, and I mean, you you're as much of of the cleaning industry as as anybody who's in the cleaning industry. Well, thank for, you for for better or worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a question here from Leslie, who happens to be in California. Um, She'd like to ask a rather general question. Someone says her shoulder hurts, can't work, and thinks it's work-related. Would that generally qualify for a workers' comp claim? There was no incident. It could have been from some other activity. I, so I would find out if there was other activity, because what's going to happen in California California is yes, that could qualify as a worker's compensation claim, but they will go back in prior medical history to see if there were other employers, anybody else who had that person there, and they could share the cost over past employment. Um, so it will depend on, it will depend on one, if they were injured previously, but if this is something that probably happened outside of work, even personally, um, they could still file, but if it's getting reported, I would make sure that they make the claim adjuster aware if you think that it's fraudulent up front because they need to be on top of that, especially in California. I know here in Washington, oh, I forgot. Can you all hear me? Yes. Now. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad I got kicked out that time. <laughs> well, I know here in Washington, all claims are initially approved. So uh, we have state workers comp. And so that's just how, how everything works here. It's automatically approved and then you have to prove that it didn't happen at work. 
which is a, a lot, a lot rougher. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to prove it a negative, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I, I and and this one case, Leslie, I'm going to say, yay! At least you have a little bit of uh, of a chance down there in California, <laughs> because normally that just doesn't seem to be the case. But I, I guess I'm kind of crossing my fingers that if they're going to um, not not include the workers comp that we're going to be able to uh, not pay those and we don't know who is going to which places i'm just going to keep my fingers crossed for california like me even if only california gets this benefit i feel like that's fair after all of the years that they have had to pay right uh, totally i'm i'm willing to sacrifice mine for california oh gosh i agree uh, it's so, it, it is shocking to us, the differences in rates for states. I mean, yeah. like absolutely insane. And the insurance commissioners have to approve all of these rates before they go out. But, you know, to have a $2 rate in Virginia, some, Texas is a dollar at, at one point was a dollar something. And then you at one point, $36 in California. It's insane. It's much better now, but my gosh, I mean, how can you be open? Like, it's very difficult yeah. that we push for this constantly. So, but part of it is the law um, on these claims and they can get rather large in certain states. So we had done a good job for a while um, when Sh uh, Schnorzweger, I, I say his name incorrectly, I'm sorry, when he was in, Arnold, um, the, it had dropped down significantly, and then all of a sudden it, it climbed back up a little. But anyway, Leslie says that she was paying thirty nine percent at one time. Yeah, that is crazy. I remember hearing that one time, like this way back in the day. I don't know how many years ago, and somebody said a, a number like that, thirty nine percent, something that was just completely outside of my comprehension. I was like, oh, she must mean like 3.9. She, yeah, she doesn't. She flipped a decimal point, yeah. Yeah, that, that's obviously a mistake. I, I remember when I first found out that it was not a mistake. I just, I could really not even comprehend. So, you know, I, I also had a question for you, Laura. Um, a little bit earlier, you said that uh, these workers comp claims that come up, that they're not going to affect our experience rating um, moving forward, um, at least during this time period. I, I had heard that before, but I had also heard that, yeah, they're not going to go against our individual companies, but the whole, everybody's experience rating is going to have to take a big jump. Like before it used to start at one and now, you know, we're all going to see that big jump to be able to manage this. Have you heard anything yeah. like that? Or? The only, yeah, the only state that it's approved so far in right now is New Jersey that they're not going to charge for it. But um, no, we have not heard anything about the experience mod taking a jump overall, but I'm thinking what's going to happen is based on the state's, um claims that have come through the base rates will change so the rate per 100 so yeah um that makes not sense really, not really related to to anything that that you write but i know a number of states on the unemployment insurance side are saying we're not going to hold any of that against any one company's experience we're just going to lump it all together in one pool and split it up evenly which means we're all going to be paying more next year. Yeah, I'm worried about that. <laughs> I, I wonder what that's going to go to. Like, we have employees ourselves, and yeah. Yeah, and, you know, what is it, over 30-some-odd million people? I mean, I'm losing count. Every every Thursday, they announce a, a few more million or have, have uninsurance or, you know, unemployment insurance claims. And I'm sure you guys are saying too, but we're saying um, as businesses are reopening, they've been asking their employees to come back. They're sending letters out. They're making phone calls. Some of them have been successful in getting people. Some of them, their employees are answering the phone. They're not responding. Um, and what they're basically doing is that a lot of times on the unemployment, because of the extra money that they were making, they 
could be possibly making more than what they were when they were working. All of our so, people are. Yeah. Are. So the yeah. problem is, if you have a situation like that and you have offered them employment and they don't come back, you can actually reach out to the unemployment office to let them know that they have been offered work again. And then their unemployment benefits can stop because they will come back to work. So, um, not and very happy, not, not very happy about it. But. Not very happy, but they're going to have to work somewhere. And I'm, I mean, grateful that they have a job. Somebody I mean, wants them. Yeah. There's some people yeah. that are not going to have jobs after this. Like they're, they're yeah. going to have to create their whole, whatever they were doing previously. So, um, so anyway, it's, it's great to have a job. <laughs> great it is great to have a job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Laura, I mean, you know, you know, our industry well, um, just on your experience, is there any one, and there's so many different types of policies and so many different things that can happen. And, you know, we all have, at least should have general liability insurance and workers comps a good idea. I heard you mention Texas is like 1% and change. I know that Texas is one of the states that don't even really require you to have workers comp, but if it's like a, you know, 1%, why not? But I know a lot of companies don't, but is there any thing that you see out there that, that, that cleaning businesses typically don't in, insure themselves, don't indemnify themselves against that they really should. It, it's a, it, it would be a, a, a good value. And just for whatever reason, they're trying to, save a little bit of money and yes. really what yeah. would that be? Yeah, and I'm and I'm gonna send you some information so that you'll have it too as well. But um right now the hot hot buttons in insurance, employment practices liability. So most of the business owner policies will give a little bit of coverage. If you don't have it on there, I recommend getting a standalone policy that has their own limits of coverage. And basically employment practices um liability policies are to defend you against um, discrimination, wrongful termination, um, failure to promote it, it and the coverages vary in states uh, on what you can purchase and not purchase like California is limited on what stuff you can get. But um, employment practices is one of them. The good thing when you have standalone insurance policy is most of them you have access to an attorney. So you could have a situation where you have to let somebody go. It's been a it's been bad for you and you have been documenting things you need to let them go or you need to come up with a plan to let them go. You can actually reach out to the attorney on your employment practices liability policy. There's no charge for it and come up with a plan. Like there's certain days of the week that you shouldn't let employees go. There's there's just things that you can talk to people about. Like you don't let people go on a firm. You, um, like Why is that? Um, they're worried about I think it's Friday. I'm pretty sure that it's Friday, but um, they're worried about retaliation or people coming back in and being upset. Like, and in certain industries, I mean, you know, okay, a good one. The post office is a good example of that. <laughs> no, like, like you, there, there's just certain industries that you wouldn't want to do that. Right now, the other one too that small businesses need to be um, very aware of is cyber. There's a lot of cyber attacks going on right now. So a lot of people used to have networks um, that were larger. They'd have people that were coming in. They were watching tech mm. stuff. They were taking care of all of that. Well, everybody's got different jobs right now. Like people are doing more than what they were doing before. It's a limited staff. And that piece is not really being watched as much. So people are having cyber attacks. So cyber insurance too. And most of the stuff is on a business owner's policy if you have one in force. There should be some coverage in there, and if you don't have one, you should you should make sure that you have that covered. Normally, it's really expensive, and you can pick different limits. One resource that we do have through our agency that is available for everyone, it's not a charge, is we have an HR portal. It's like having an HR manager on staff, which a lot of small businesses don't do that anymore. You can download, customize your own employee handbooks. There's information on OSHA compliance, hiring, firing practices, all sorts of checklists. Um, but it's a good tool to uh, get answers for stuff, especially if you're in a multi-state area where you're going into just to find out what's the difference between going into Maryland, what's the difference between going into Virginia. So 
Um, but anyway, it's a free resource and I'll make sure that I send you the flyer for that too. But we're trying to yeah, get everybody awesome. having employment practices, liability claims, because once you have them, it's the cleanup after of property damage, care custody control claims that you, the cleanup is work. Like we don't want the insurance companies to see that as a, even as a whole, we would like to have our industry knowledge out there ahead of time. So that's what yeah. we're trying to I mean, insurance is, from a cleaning business owner's perspective, isn't the fun, exciting stuff where, you know, people want to talk about marketing and, you know, all the, you know, sales and the, you know, who wants to, who wants to spend a lot of time fretting over insurance, but we try to, you know, help cleaning business owners see insurance as an investment and you, you, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you know you're gonna need it. And yeah. if you, you know, find yourself in a situation where you need, you know, uh, the cyber insurance or you've got some EEOC claim and you don't have uh, the right policies in place, it can it can be miserable and you can lose a lot of sleep. You can lose your business if you don't don't have the right insurance. So um you don't you don't want to you don't want to cut corners and, and just think well I'm not going to need that. If I, some people go into insurance and looking at it, it's like if the government's not making me if somebody's not making me buy that policy I'm not going to take it. Right. Yeah, that's the stance of a lot of people in Texas, right? Yeah. On the patient end, but you have to be very careful too because in some states, for people that haven't purchased coverage, you're still responsible for that person. You can right. be. Per- personally responsible and you can be personally responsible for anybody that they bring on the job site as well. So, and you don't know, especially if you're using, you know, uninsured subs or subcontractors that say they have coverage. Um, it opens a whole new can of that. So, um, I always think that you should work with somebody that if you have questions, pick up the phone and ask them without all like everything being reported to an insurance company. Yeah. Because many, Many people do that. that you call, it goes right in. Or if you're working directly with like a direct writer, every call that comes in, they have to record all of that stuff. So, um, and that's actually really scary. I'm glad you brought that up, Laura, because that is really scary. A lot of times people will say, you know, I don't know what to do. And they start asking every random Joe out on the road what to do because they can't call their insurance company. They go to Facebook looking for an answer. They do. No, but they could come to me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's awesome, Laura. But Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, just the, just the relationship. I don't think everybody really understands that. I mean, you're not an insurance company. You basically are the agent, but you, you know, I'm, you, know if you're, you work for your clients. I mean, we, we saw um, some folks Mar- up here earlier, Marlo. I mean, Mar- you know, Marlo is your client. If Marlo calls you up with a question, you're helping her and then you make right. a decision, you know, you're, 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 you're going to be looking out for her best interest. Absolutely. And a lot of the stuff comes up is just what if this happens? Because, you know, like when you're making your plans and you're doing things for the future and you're thinking of expanding into different territories and like, if you call an insurance company and say, Oh, you know, I'm going to, I'm window cleaning now. Okay. Well, many times I, flat depending on what statement you have to talk about how we're going to word that exactly incidental funny yeah. stories using the whole system like we would help wording on if we were going to go down that route like how do you do this what's the right way and then we would help but many people starting or getting into different fields this is new to them they, i mean so well you know i don't think I don't think it was that long ago that that people did not think they needed to have a relationship with their banker either, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I think people are understanding, wow, these professional relationships matter. I need a relationship with my banker. I need a relationship with my insurance agent. These relationships are important for the strength and the viability of my company. So 
I, I think what Marlo said kind of sums it up perfectly. And that this is what I've always heard about you too, Laura, is that yeah. you're there for, for the business owner, that you're always available. You're always willing to answer anybody's questions about anything that uh, I, I mean, I, I I think that's a huge, a huge win. And especially in our industry where, like Tom said, it's like, it feels like it's almost a joke that people would go to Facebook and ask these questions. But that's really what happens. That's, that's the truth. And a lot of, you know, I'm going to say this because a lot of people starting out don't realize this, but a lot of people that are starting out that are just getting a general liability policy for the first time, they'll call a lot of times and they'll say, I just want, I want the cheapest thing that's there, whatever the cheap. And, you know, we can write that, but it, that would be like taking somebody's money it, for nothing. Like, and I, I'm not, I won't do it. Like, I know you want special forms and I'm not going to write the coverage without it, but like I said, you're not going to hurt people for bodily injury, but making sure that certain forms are on there and then knowing the difference, like somebody that just wants general liability policy in some states, you might run into a minimum premium. And for the same minimum premium, I might put a business owner's policy or even less just by adding a little bit of property. So it's different. And I, and I, and I, and a lot of times, like if you're buying online, you don't see that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and the bigger the bigger you get, uh, you know, the more you have, the more you have to lose. So the the more important it is to make sure that that you have the right policies with the right levels of of, of coverage. You know, a million dollars isn't as much money as it used to be. You know, sometimes you know, I don't, I'm sure you have clients who carry umbrella policies that give them a higher level of coverage because. You know. Absolutely. And you know, one coverage that I wanted to talk, I'll tell you real quick about that I did, hadn't brought up is hired and non-owned auto liability. So most liability policies, you can add that coverage right onto your, your policy. And it's usually very inexpensive to do that. And if you don't have it on there, as, when you get off the phone or tomorrow morning, call and get it added onto your policies. But what we're finding is that that the coverage is designed to help a business owner while they have employees that are driving their own vehicles on their behalf. So you have somebody that's going to and from different job sites and something should happen. If they're involved in an accident and found to be at fault, their policies apply first. That's how insurance works. It's their car, their insurance, their everything, it's on them. However, if they don't have enough insurance, maybe they purchase the minimum state limits or they don't have insurance at all, maybe it canceled. It was, paying rent or paying insurance, you now become primary as a business owner. Right now, yeah. we're going to see that because that's where people are right now. Every time this happens with um, a downturn with the economy, um, we see that people things. So make sure you have hired a non-owned auto liability to protect you all as business owners. Well, you know, that's a really good point too, Laura, because I, this was actually your advice to me a couple years back at, um, I guess it was a convention, it was a, at least a few years back. And I have company cars, so people were driving their own cars, but periodically somebody would have like a dental appointment or mm -hmm. they'd leave, leave halfway through the day or they would come halfway through the day and they'd be driving their own car. And I did not have that and you were like you you should it's inexpensive and it was i i don't remember how much it cost but it was very inexpensive and it's I, mine has actually kicked in once because of a dentist appointment just like i was saying and i had no clue you know i i'd been operating without it for how many years 22 <laughs> something like that oh this, this question is hanging out here just real quick laura if you could help us with this um Linda had an employee motorcycle accident, came back to work. She's having a hard time doing her job, uh, fell going up the stairs in client's home, not hurt. Says she hurt her leg from the accident. It's not strong enough. She limps. Uh, doctor's note indicating no restrictions to come back. Yeah. Not so in this particular case, because definitely it's an this was an open claim, I would have um, had her go the employee go back 
and get another note because she is not able to do the work that she said that she was going to. Um, and if there is a claim adjuster assigned to this, I wouldn't even say anything to the employee at all. I would go ahead and have the claim adjuster reach out to the doctor's office and say, this is what's going on. We don't need to be seen again, what happened with it, or is she just trying not to go to work? Like, you could have that right now. We're gonna yeah, have- awesome. Um, I don't think a lot of people would even consider to contact their insurance agent for that. They wouldn't know that 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 you guys would do that on their behalf. I think most people feel kind of, you know, on, on, on an island and got to do everything themselves. I, I could have misunder could have misread that. Was the auto accident from work or not from work? It was uh, not from work. Okay, so even if it's not from work, um, I would definitely have that person go back to their doctor and get a note that they can be re-released because what's going to happen right now, if that person comes in and it's injured, it is truly a worker's compensation claim. Yeah. They don't care if it's from a prior injury, they'll do a portion of it, but in some states you can't even do that. If it's a new claim, something happened after an incident, it could be filed as brand new. So have that person go back to the doctor, get a note and have them re-released um, with whatever restrictions they are, they're going to have, if any, but I wouldn't want to work without it. It was a motorcycle accident. So I assume it was not work related. To and from work though, or the motorcycle. Here that that's common. So, um, we're right up against the hour here. We've got one question from Amber asking about her PPP loan and unemployment. You can't take both. If you're drawing unemployment, you won't be able to pay yourself through PPP at the same time. So it is one or the other there. Um, real quick, I'll just share with uh, everybody cleaning business today, or I'll try to. If you haven't subscribed to Cleaning Business Today, this is where you do it. Really easy email address, first name, last name. We've got our secret coronavirus downloads resource page here with a lot of useful information. And we just add the new stuff on the end. Laura's going to be sharing with us some of the information that she shared today, and we'll be adding this here. It'll be there tomorrow, so you can come back and, and download that. I'll take this link and share it in the chat or I'll try to I'm not sharing my page I, I, I am not doing a great job of sharing my page am I I just noticed that no we we've been looking at Laura all this whole time okay well I don't think any I don't think anybody's gonna complain about that though just saying Tom it's all good it's all good but we'll add Laura's uh, information here on our, our, our super duper resource page that I just dropped the uh, link in chat. Um, Laura, this has been really, really awesome. Um, so helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. There's just yeah, no, thank you. All fluid. And um, as we get more information, I'd be happy to share it with you. But like I said, it's changing constantly. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Please, yeah. please do. Uh, we would, we would love it. Uh, trying yeah. to stay on top of all this stuff is so. It's like a full time job, you know. I just poof. In the, I'm to find in, in the stuff that you do, Laura, in the long run, has a profound impact on how much value and wealth a, a business owner creates over the years. And you know, if we spent a little less time worrying about the latest marketing fad and a little more time on managing the insurance and, and risk side of our business, we'd have a lot more to show for all of the, the, the sweat and worry that we put into our business, or at least that's my thought. And I, I love what you guys do. And this information is awesome. Um, well, thank you. We, we will, we, we're going to take you up on your offer too. And as things develop, if you would please come back and share 
you know, hopefully more states adopt some of the practices that uh, New Jersey is doing with, with workers' comp and, yeah. you know, maybe we'll get some clear you know, business interruption insurance. Any, any last thoughts, Laura, that, that we should be thinking about? No, just, um, you know, have review your policies at the time. Everybody was asking down the road, are we going to see more exclusions on policies, especially like for stuff like this? Um, SARS is usually already on there as an exclusion, and they've already done some um, disease stuff. What I will say is down the road, we may be able to purchase this coverage. It's going to be kind of like employment practices liability, where it was so expensive in the beginning, and nobody could afford it. Now everybody can get it. So I think that over time, things will change. But definitely do a review of your policies. This is a great time to do it. Make sure you have what you need. Um, You're building these businesses, and these policies are to protect your assets. Like, there's no point if you're not So as much as you can get anything. That's good yeah, advice. Right now, while well, there's still insurance companies to to get us the insurance, right? Absolutely. Well, that's that's great, and we'll uh, have Laura's information posted on our uh, resource page tomorrow. Um, we're up against the hour, Liz. Any anything? Nope, that's it. Just thanks again, Laura. I look forward to hearing what you have to say again as things change. Yes, this was awesome. Thanks Thank so much. You Thanks guys, so much for having me. Take care. Take Thanks. care. Be safe. We'll see you tomorrow at five. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.